as I casually stroll into the nondescript business complex sporting a giant version of the company's logo on the front, I take in the array of tan-colored buildings, all of which appear to be connected. Nothing flashy about this modern, functional facility. Edison Technology blends in with every other company in this California tech hub. Not exactly a place that fits my usual vibe. A burly security guard greets me with a scowl. Nobody's getting past this guy. May I help you, sir? He asks, his voice like sandpaper. Even though I'm a couple inches over six feet tall, I feel like a pipsqueak beside his massive frame. He could crush me like a gnat, using one hand. Yes, I'm here to see Teddy Robbins. I have an appointment. He grabs a clipboard from his desk and squints at it, then scribbles something on one of the pages before handing me a lanyard and badge with the word visitor blazoned on the front. Sign here, he says in a clipped tone, pointing at the clipboard. Following his terse instructions, I sign my name on the list. If Teddy is as unwelcoming as this place, I'm not sure I want his business. As a personal chef, I like to bond with the people I work for, and from my chilly reception so far, I don't hold out much hope that Mr. Robbins is going to be approachable and friendly. I'm a bit surprised he doesn't go by Theodore, because the Teddy moniker sounds far too warm and snugly. After hanging the badge around my neck, I walk through a detector while my laptop bag undergoes a scan, much like security at the airport. Wow, this place is locked down tighter than Fort Knox. Why all the security measures? Is corporate espionage a real threat? With a loud click, a heavy metal door swings open and the guard motions for me to go through. He's not much for directions, just a finger point and a nod. The massive door slowly swings shut behind me, closing with a resounding thud. Now this must be how prisoners feel. I'm starting to doubt my decision to meet this potential client. These oppressive security measures certainly don't feel like something instituted by a friendly, reasonable guy just looking for a personal chef to help lighten his load. I'm sure a big-shot CEO can afford my rates, but with my already jam-packed schedule, I can't afford to take on a client I don't click with. Closed office doors with small, hard-to-read nameplates beside the doorframe span in front of me for as far as I can see. How am I going to find this guy's office? I'm pretty sure Teddy's the CEO. Don't they usually get a fancy corner office? Reading the nameplates, I quickly discern that these aren't offices. Test Lab 1, Test Lab 2, Test Lab 3. Such a clever naming scheme. When I approach the end of the hall, it expands into a wide circular area with actual offices flanking the back. Glass fronts reveal desks and chairs inside, although I don't see any occupants. A studious-looking lady sits at a desk in front of me, almost hidden by a large monitor. She glances up from the screen once I'm standing in front of her desk. Her small ghost of a smile makes me feel at least marginally more welcome than the security guy did. I'm here to see Teddy Robbins? Third door from the right, she says, vaguely waving her hand towards the bank of offices as her eyes rotate back to the screen. I head towards where she pointed, then glance back over my shoulder, catching her watching me.